Another great show brought to you through the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Law of Attraction Talk Radio is now celebrating its 50th year in broadcasting. Through it all, you and I have expanded our awareness and joy to great heights. Join us for another five years of empowering our lives through the understanding of the universal law of attraction. Let our happiness and well-being continue to ripple out to the rest of the world. Stay tuned for another great show of Law of Attraction Talk Radio with Jules. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I am so excited about tonight's show. You see, it's all about music, and not just your everyday music. It has to do with high vibrational, high frequency music that can literally impact your life. I don't know if anybody has heard about the singing bowls, but this is very, very special. The singing bowls are crystal bowls that you use uh, to make a tune. And this sound actually goes deep inside your body. Last weekend, we had Olivia Melody come and do a huge demonstration with about 45 crystal balls. And it's amazing. As you sit there, you can feel this music go inside your soul. You can feel the vibration with every breath you take. And this is just not regular uh, guitar playing or, or regular piano music. This is healing music, which gets into every cell of the body in which you can actually heal yourself. And beyond that, you know, on this show, we constantly strive to improve people's life. And there's one way that you can do this. And it's very, very simple. Every day, simply take 15 minutes and go within. Meditate. You can do it by simply pausing your mind or by listening to music or to by listening to guided meditations. Whichever way you choose, that is what will help you to stay in that well-being in order for you to create from a different place. I have a wonderful friend uh, in Southern California who is going through a very, very difficult crisis. And it has to do with her putting her mother into a convalescent hospital. And she has felt much guilt over this. How could she take her mother out of her home and put her into a hospital? Well, she had to because of her health condition was way beyond what my friend could help deliver to her mother. But because of this guilt, she actually created animosity with other members of her family in order for her to Uh, use the distraction of anger from feeling that emotion of guilt. She placed herself into being in a victim mode, saying, my family does not understand why I am doing that and they are treating me horribly and they are not listening, they're not willing to understand, they are just treating me terrible, willing to take me to court in order to keep my mother out of a convalescent hospital. Well, when I say to her, and that's, it's not easy to suggest this, and I don't really suggest people do this, but when I suggested to her that she could be creating this scenario to her as a distraction from the guilt that she's feeling with her mother, she gets a little irate and say, no. No, they're just being mean, and and I'm just not going to put up. I'm just going to stop dealing with them altogether. In the midst of crisis, we tend to focus on other things that serve to distract us from what's really going on with our emotions. 
it's at this precise time that you need to get down to basics and start meditating. Start asking for clarity. For we know on Law of Attraction Talk Radio, we create everything. We create the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's reasons why we do it. It's not necessarily bad, but we just got to understand why it is that we created this situation. There's nothing more important than us getting to a place of understanding and to let go of the anger and to shift up to a better place. So with that in mind, this is why in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be bringing to you meditation, music, and techniques in which will help bring you out of the chaos and into that well-being state. Because we are powerful. But once we get into all those emotions, we are powerless to change Because we're attracting more of that powerless to us. We're attracting more of that chaos to us because we're right dab in the center of it. So that's why I choose to to really focus on getting you into that place of well-being. There's nothing more important than you being happy. And you can flip that switch and say... Wait a minute, let me bring some calm and clarity into my life to fully understand what is going on. Why am I attracting this to me? Why am I manifesting this? Why am I doing this instead of being in the feel-good place? So again, that's what I am hoping to bring to you in the next couple of weeks as well as this very important show tonight because the singing bowls is the perfect music in which to sync both sides of the brain and to get your body in alignment with your mind and this will heal your body heal your emotions and it is phenomenal so let's get going on tonight's show Are you still struggling on how to get the Law of Attraction to work for you? Dr. David Che's book, Total Law of Attraction, was designed to bring about greater clarity using quantum physics. Recently featured on NBC, Fox News, and many newspapers across the U.S., Dr. Che reveals key information that has often been overlooked. It's available for your iPad and can also be found on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Buy it today at TotalLawOfAttraction.com. That's www.TotalLawOfAttraction.com. Total Law of Attraction is the book that you have been waiting for. You are listening to your daily dose of well-being and inspiration on Law of Attraction Radio Network at LOARadioNetwork.com. Hear this incredible show on your smartphone through Stitcher.com, which goes through your car stereos with Ford Sync or any auto dashboard that has the Internet. Listen to our 24-7 broadcast with our mobile app as well, or just listen through an MP3 player or computer. Remember, LOARadioNetwork.com, heard in over 120 countries, is the radio station for your well-being. Please help me welcome Olivia Melody. Well, welcome, Olivia, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm so glad you could be with us. It's great to join you, Jules. Thanks for having me. You know, I was telling everybody that you were at the Law of Attraction Spiritual Center last Sunday performing with your beautiful singing bowls. And I thought, wow, this would be a great opportunity to introduce you and your bowls, singing bowls, to all of the listeners. So could we start off and you talk about what are these singing bowls? Mm, The bowls I play on are made of crystal. They're uh, used in the semiconductor industry, so they're an industrial tool, but they are the finest man-made crystal. They range in size from, oh, uh, 
three inches up to 24 inches, although uh, my largest is 18. It's the all I can carry and fit in my car. Uh, the bigger the bowl, the lower the octave or the tone, the higher the bowl, the higher the octave. And um, they produce a drone tone, like, whoa. Uh, people who first heard it, uh, I know Foley operators, because I'm, I'm here near Hollywood, said, mm, it sounds like feedback. But then they asked if they could use my music for, for to feed in different places. I said, sure. They can also sound like bells. So I play them both ways, uh, very similar to the sound of the metal bowls, Tibetan bowls, some people call them, or Himalayan bowls, and yet they're made of crystal. Uh, they're uh, manufactured all over the world and, and have been for at least 40 years. Sound healers have been actively using them for the last 20 as they've become available. Uh, up until recently, they were only shipped from the United States uh, all over the world. So, and it is a relatively still new modality, and yet vibrational healing for me is the most powerful type sound vibrational healing with crystal bowls is the most powerful modality I've found. Um, it takes pe listeners from beta to alpha within five minutes, uh, and they know that with um, thermoscan imaging. So our brain wave patterns will shift. And then it will take them down to theta and delta. Uh, in my concerts, people fall asleep. And I say, see if you can stay present in what happened. Um, they're amazing tools. Uh, and, they're, and they're very beautiful to look at as well. And I uh, wanted to give you some feedback from last Sunday. I have talked to a lot of the people that were there. And they were just going, wow. Wow, that they could just feel the vibration, and that's all they could say is wow. So it is an incredible experience. It takes you to a place of no thought. Uh, well, there is thought. I'll uh, say no words or a place beyond thought, uh, because I do have people who will come to my concerts with notebooks so that they can write down all of their epiphanies, new ideas, new understandings, and that's where they go. OK, um, and then there are others who come for physical healing or emotional healing. So uh, it runs the whole gamut. So let's start off at the beginning. You were a medium way back when and you before you got into the singing bowls, right? I, I did. I was energy sensitive. I've also been a medium. I was ordained in 85 and studied with some amazing people. Uh, Nancy Tappy, who identified the first indigo children and is credited in all the indigo books. She's here in Carlsbad and a number of wonderful other teachers. So I knew a number of different healing modalities as well, energy healing modalities. And I, um, and I went out to discover about sound healing. I had read about it. Edgar Cayce said sound would be the medicine of the future. Uh, Nostradamus talked about sound. And Edgar Casey was back in the 40s. I knew that they were using sound waves to um, take care of kidney stones. Um, and I thought, let me go investigate that. Uh, and it was simply a matter of time before I ran across singing bowls. Dr. Mitchell Gaynor had written, written a book, Sounds That Heal. He was head of oncology at a major New York hospital at the time. This is in the, the mid-90s. Um, and from the moment that I heard my first singing bowl, it was simply a matter of which one was I coming home with. When I got, when I received more than one, and I could see what happened when I played. Okay, huge energy was filling that bowl. When I got more, I began to hear music. So when I got more than one crystal bowl, I could get harmonics and all kinds of new things happening. Um, and literally, I heard symphonic music. Now, that's how I would describe it. Uh, you could also say the angelic choir. It was music that I'd never been heard before, and I thought, how can I translate it? Wow. So one bowl led to uh, 47 bowls along the way, uh, Celtic harp, symphony gong, huge vibes, chimes, drums, and then other musicians joining with me 
how, what does it take to play with Olivia? Can they hear the music? <laughs> and can they follow along? Uh, so flute, flautist, um, I've played with all kinds of musicians over the years who can hear the music. Because I believe that all of us are intuitive. Have We have different um, abilities in different areas. And quite a few people can hear things that don't seem to be apparent. Well, it's it's kind of funny that um, you were talking about this on Sunday, that your last name is Melody. Yes, and it's you, Irish. <laughs> and you did not change your name, but it's so fitting for what you are doing with the singing bowls. It is a cosmic joke, and I... Uh, and, I, and it helps me to take myself lightly. <laughs> I have no musical training, no, and that is my given name, Melody. Isn't that something? So it's, it's really incredible that these singing bowls are so spectacular. You went in and, and created all of these CDs that are just beautiful. I bought a couple of, on Sunday. I've already listened to them. They are such great tools to meditate with. Thank you. It, it is channeled music. Uh, so my job is to get out of the way or to step aside and allow the music to flow through me. Uh, what I've discovered over time um, is that it, it works on many different levels, uh, just like vibration does. There are many different frequencies. So it seems to be good for most everything. Not everything. Um, there's always anomalies, so it seems to be great for physical issues, um, mental stress, um, emotional stress. The only uh, disharmony or disease that I found that it um, isn't beneficial for would be Alzheimer's. Uh, with really? Alzheimer's and dementia, um, those individuals, I say, already have one foot on the other side or they have part of their awareness already in fifth dimensional what in another dimension in another awareness okay so alzheimer's dementia patients can see things that aren't there they already have a foot on the other side to bring them back into this time this space the re this reality what music therapists have found is to have a repeatable um strong beat oftentimes it is um music as well that they know from their um, childhood from their teenage time. I've seen incredible footage uh, from people who are deep in dementia uh, watching a guitar player or a drummer um, snapping to within three minutes uh, total clarity and saying that's a great song would you play it again. Many stories of how they'll click back in for that short period of time where the family can come and connect. There, it's like a miracle. Uh, but for that, you do need to have a repeatable strong beat or and or a music that um, is reminiscent from their own life life. Um, otherwise, singing bowls help with um, every other issue that I've found, um, particularly with autism, high functioning um, and even medium functioning autistic children are able to track and uh, be responsive with the drone tone of the crystal bowls. Um, I've, because when I first produced this music, I didn't know what it was for. I just knew it was good stuff. And so I sent it to different people and said, would you give me feedback of what it does? Um, I have found that people are able to lower their medication, that they're finding stress relief. I know that singing bowls are being used with PTSD with great results. and. Uh, Dr. Mitchell Gaynor was, of course, using it with his um, oncology patients who were going through chemo, found that they could um, reduce, that their pain was reduced, that their stress was reduced, and as a result, he was able to reduce their medication for pain. Uh, I've had people come to concerts in wheelchairs and walk out. Humbling healing testimonies. Each person is unique as to where they go energetically um, with the music to allow for healing if that's their journey to take place. So total remission of, of breast cancer, of being pain-free while they listen to the music even though they've had polio since they were young children. Um, 
Wow. And yet I have friends who use it to go to sleep and they've never heard the end of the CD. Um, the, my second album, which is Journey to Wholeness, um, I thought I was making for healing on all levels for all of humanity. And then one day I got a phone call and it was from a woman who was, sounded rather frantic and she said, can you overnight your CD? And I said, well, yes, I can. And could you tell me what the issue is? And I heard this very frustrated voice say, I have cats. And I'm like, yes. And she said, my animal behaviorist made a list and your CD was at the top, Journey to Wholeness, for my cats. How fast can you get me that CD? I went, oh, I can overnight it to you. Uh, I had no idea that animal behaviorists were recommending it for dogs, cats, parrots, and snakes. Oh, my goodness. I've got cats. Big <laughs> Go figure, go figure. So what I found, and then I've had other people who've called me and said, how come every time I listen to your music, I hear different singers? And there isn't any, there aren't any singers or vocals. So it, the music has its own energy as a medium. I know that um, spirit, when I say spirit, that comes in the light of love for the highest and best good of all, is limitless in their ability to morph and shift and change. And so I'll have others who will say, how come your album sounds completely different this year than last year? I go, well, it's spirit. Others could say it's magic, but I like to say it's spirit. So they know no limits. Spirit is boundless, limitless in how it can morph and shift and change that music to assist people. So. It has so many applications. I love getting stories from people. So you have place, or Spirit has place, energy on these albums, right? They do. They have. Uh, and I know that from the feedback. I'll go in and say, well, I'm going to make music for healing. I think I'm making it for people, and it turns out it's for people and animals. And and then I hear all the different ways they're using it. Um and it will change because that's how it is. I record live, and that's rather rare, too. Uh, most music that you hear is a, a huge, laborious process of hours and hours. Um, but basically, we go in to capture the energy right there when it's taking place. And the listeners on my show realize that once the energy is placed it stays with that object or it stays on our radio show it, it just stays there forevermore and the more people who come and actually listen to it the more power it gets by people sharing their energy within it without even realizing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it does have its own presence I've had um Many friends say, could I use your music for my meditation CDs, for the background of my DVDs and videos? It's like, yes, the more the music can get out there, the better. It has its own, it does so many things, and yet I just know a little bit of what it does. Yes, it will align all your chakras and meridians. Yes, it will clear all of the bad juju in the room. It will change things and uplift things, kind of like mm, if you went through with a feather duster and just cleaned up your room or sprinkled fairy dust or sparkly light. So it lifts, it lifts things um, to make the journey smoother, easier, or as I love Esther Hicks says, to give you those good downstream thoughts. Yes. You know, instead yes. of find a fight against, you relax, release, and go, ah, and find new paradigms, new alternatives, the way through of sticky wickets of um, balancing your checkbook. It's good for many things, although the, my music is used in healing and spiritual centers around the world. It's, it's good for that day-to-day -day stuff. You don't have to sit there and put your meditation hat on and, and go to work, although you can put your meditation on hat on and be at one with the music and go on fabulous journeys, but you can also just play it all in the background if you're going to have a stressful, if the 
things you're doing that day or have set to do that day might feel a little stressful when you look at it. So it would be something that we could put the CD in the car and listen to it on our commute to get us mm -hmm. in gear for the... Great. Yes, great for those road rages because you're going to shift, right? There's um, something called entrainment, okay, which is a very fancy word, kind of like for the law of um, vibration attraction. Entrainment is what happens to you as an energy person when you hear rock and music. Let's say when you hear music that has a great beat, after a while, you'll start tapping your toe, right? Okay, you're maybe nodding your head. That's because your whole body is caught with the beat. Well, this with this music, your body entrains to new frequencies and moves you into balance and harmony. So the drive goes faster, easier, smoother, and hopefully you'll catch that slipstream and avoid uh, the traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. You know, I... Um... I discovered doing this Law of Attraction show that for people that say they don't have time to meditate, they don't have time because they don't meditate. I think when you slow down and use these tools like the um, singing bowls to listen to, it's such a pleasure to turn within and let your brains sync together both hemispheres it's like it changes your world it changes your perception so I often think that it, when people get nervous or they are so consumed with our everyday life tuning in to something like this you are doing yourself such a dramatic favor in how you're changing your life would you agree with that I would it's about self-care um, we don't we don't live to work we work to live um, with our society particularly here in america and with what's going on um we forget we can forget about family values about having a balanced life and that um you're only as good for others as you suit up and show up for yourself now, everyone meditates every day, which is shifting your brainwave patterns. Generally, it's when you're driving, which is called just open receptivity or daydreaming. Who we are does need to go in and have that pause that refreshes or to tune out to the extent that we can tune out consciously and tune in to our own self. Even for just five, ten minutes, is to the extent that we'll come back to um, our work day, uh, whatever that is, renewed, refreshed with a new perspective. As a recovering type A, my guides had to beat that into me. Because when I first discovered the bowls and, um, and my mission was, which was to take them as many places as possible all over the country, because how do you market or promote music that's never been heard before on an instrument that no one knows? Well, you need to go out and play. Um, that So there was a huge drive, and yet Spirit made sure that I stopped and tuned in every day. And they said, to the point that you stop and are quiet and go within, you'll come back with double the energy. Okay, so that was my hook. That was my little carrot for the good little burrow, is that if I take time for me, quality time for me, I will come back and be even more productive. And that was a, a brand new thought, rather than just go, go, go. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was, it was never the thought that I might burn out, but the thought that I could be even better. Um, <laughs> and, and didn't even look at the benefits for myself it's like sometimes you have to um take your own medicine yes um and the benefits are huge wow are huge. well i would like to give everyone a treat right now just to listen to the music and then we'll be back 
just because I think that the sound is so important that everybody needs to experience a sample of it. So we're going to be, we're, I'm going to be playing this music, and then we're going to be right back with Olivia to talk about some other things that are going on. So stay with me and listen to this beautiful, beautiful music. Yeah, that was fabulous. You do such a great job. Ooh. And you do too. I'm in awe of your abilities right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so, Olivia, um, tell us about, you do a lot of medium development classes. You actually help people to become more intuitive, which is a huge blessing because, you know, we, we're in this shift right now of going to different dimensions, and this is really what we need to know. So could you talk a little bit about how we can become more intuitive, develop our mediumship, and exactly what is the difference between being a medium and a psychic? Oh, great question and that's um and that's generally on um the mediumship certification test describe the difference between a medium and a psychic so a psychic picks up information from the outer field around your energy body okay so we appear to be solid like a lump of ice okay but we are as a spirit um and yet we have an energy field around us um, and that's where psychics will pick up information. As a medium, um, I say I have a whole group in spirit that I talk to. And generally, I say my people talk to your people. So as a medium, when I'm giving information, 
I am giving information that I'm receiving from mm, my, some people might say my higher self as a spiritualist minister, from my guides and teachers. Um, as a medium, I'm able to um, plug in and go any number of places energetically. And so uh, to contact my people, can contact loved ones who've crossed over as well as um, their guides and teachers and uh, help them with that along their path. So um, so that would be the difference. Um, as a medium, I go, can go into trance, light trance, deep trance. My voice might change a little bit. My face might shift just a little bit, not too scary. And then as further out a medium can go until you have mediums that are like mm, Edgar Casey. He's probably the most... Mm, well known where the great sleeping prophet so that would be deep trance or you'll see mediums sitting down their voice will change and they have no memory of what they've said so they're allowing their guides to speak directly through them so you do, you don't remember a lot of it or do you i don't within even doing readings for people and over the phone or in person it makes no difference to me because generally my readings are done with my eyes closed um I will remember a little bit of it for the first five, ten minutes, kind of like when oil flows through or water flows through a pipe. You're left with a little residue. You have a feeling about it. Um, you get the gist of it. Uh, but you're mm, operating or I'm operating in an altered time and space. And so, no, when I come back into me, I, I don't remember much at all. And I may not remember your face. I've learned to say over time, um, and where do I know you from? And it's someone who I sat face to face with for an hour and gave them a whole reading. But I was in an altered space at the time. Wow. So you you are able to um, have your people contact departed ones and that they can get information? Yes. Yes, if they're available. Now, not everyone is always available um, in for any number of reasons. And that sounds like the big cop-out, doesn't it? Uh, and yet in um, Christian tradition, you have that area in between death or the transition known as purgatory, okay, where you go in between. In Buddhism, it's called the bardo. I'm the bardo. And it's mm, kind of like the waiting room or the transition space. OK, um, and some some people, when they transition, stay in that area longer than others. Now, we're huge beings. Um, so it, that would be very sad if all of us were trapped, if all of who we are is trapped there. Um, but that just allows you to access one piece of that personality. OK, and some really aren't particularly traumatic, traumatic deaths, um, uh, deaths with um alcohol, drugs, and trauma, those individuals can be, um, take longer to come before they're available mm -hmm. to come to the phone or to dial up. What about, um, uh, like you said, Alzheimer's? Mm, Alzheimer's are really um, delightful uh, because they're here on this plane with one foot on the other side. And so um, Alzheimer's, Patients who are here in um, hospice or senior assisted living centers are uh, generally very easy to contact. Really? Great. Yes. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> it's so funny because um, my mother, who died of Alzheimer's, um, she's been popping in my mind all morning. And I know that you and I are going to have a reading tomorrow. So I, And it's funny that we're talking about Alzheimer's. So I guess she's ready to to just open up and start shouting to me. Yes, because with Alzheimer's, you're easing your way over to the other side. All right. Now, it's very common. Um, it's very common with people who have um, diseases uh, where they are getting ready to cross over to comment about who's in the room. Who's in the room? I saw your and the people that they are seeing in the room are loved ones who've already crossed over. So it's very common as the time grows near for them uh, 
for people to comment to their loved ones who come to visit to say, you know, I saw your uncle last night or I saw your father here in the room. Uh, with dementia and Alzheimer's patients will talk about that to everyone <laughs> because they literally have one foot on the other side. So crossing over isn't a scary thing for them as they're easing out of this frequency where you appear to be ice into water, into mm, into steam it's not scary it's not scary because they've already um had their visitors pass wow that is so great i love how you explain that wonderful great and so one reason why i'm teaching these days is because um 2012 is such an exciting time all right I say we all got a ticket to the big show. That's why there are more people here on earth than there ever have been before because it's such an exciting time what's happening. Yes, the Mayan calendar is ending, and it was a calendar of consciousness. And the consciousness was changing so dramatically the calendar ended. We're at the, um, what is it? Um, I'm trying to remember the numbers, a uh, 24,000-year cycle. We're at the closest, we've 25,000-year cycle. We're the closest this planet in this um, and our whole little solar system has been in 25,000 years to the center of our galaxy, which means we're being exposed to all new cosmic rays or shooting down on our little solar system. That's as it's hitting everybody and we're getting hit with new frequencies. What you're seeing is that people are opening up. People are starting to see, know, understand, hear, feel, and perceive and be sensitive in new ways that they never were before. People have questions. What's going on? Okay, so whereas before you just didn't talk about it and maybe your mama did say, I saw your dad just before she crossed over and you okay, you're starting to see things, you're starting to feel things. And so people are hungry to learn now what's going on. What's going on with me? I do feel that everyone comes in intuitive. We all have um, different abilities. Um, and then about the time of preteen, uh, puberty, you, they stop mm, remembering because the world doesn't support or hasn't up until now psychic kids, kids that know stuff, um, and kids would get in trouble. You know, you're full of the devil. There are more examples of mediums who shut down. Why? Because they got taken to counselors, to psychiatrists, got put on drugs, or, or got a beating or a whipping, because it's just not polite to say, how come Uncle Joe's going to burn down his house, and then Uncle Joe does? Okay, or you ask, it's... You learn to shut up and put up or hide it completely because it's just not comfortable. I know I saw, um, I met a mother the other day and she was saying my son sees stuff, but he's not comfortable. He doesn't want to see it. And he's going on 16 now and he just tells them to go away because he doesn't want to see it. Now that child came in seeing at some point because it's not going away. Um, he's made peace with it. He just doesn't talk to all the kids that come by to see him who've crossed over because he's a kid. Uh, so that's why I'm teaching. And then I'm also teaching because people are, have questions. Uh. And then another reason for teaching is that um, I want to, and my desire is always to empower others. There are no ethics police for mediums. Or although there are old blue laws and old laws that say you can't you can't be a, you can't practice being a psychic in certain towns, particularly in the uh, northeast. But Oceanside had those laws here in California up until 20 years ago. Um, no, 15 years ago they had laws against psychics. Um, but with mediums, with mediumship, you really want to empower others. Right. Um, uplifting, supportive and positive and how they can get their own information so rather than um, manipulation through fear and intimidation and or the old gypsy thought of you know give me three hundred dollars and I'll burn candles for you to get rid of all that bad juju so uh, in two weeks I'm holding a workshop psychic self-defense 
easy things you can do so that when you come from home from work and you haven't had a really stressful day, but you're exhausted to learn how to mm, take care of your energy body and have better boundaries because we're opening up, we're becoming more sensitive just by virtue of us getting closer to the galactic center, uh, being a part of this new dimensional awareness that's coming in. It's like, how can you learn new skills? And I've noticed that um, I'm becoming more sensitive, especially in large groups of people. Some, I can only be there for a short period of time before I have to remove myself completely and just like take a deep breath to relax. Mm -hmm. That's part of it, right? Would you say? that That is a part of it. So it's... Um, Mm, how um, we generally move through the world has changed. So you're more sensitive to large crowds. Uh, a, a good psychic self-protection for that would be stand on the left side of a crowd. Uh, when you go to the movie theater, sit on the left side. We, uh, If you want to, inf just the same way, influence friends, uh, you stand on their left side. So... Um, the right side of the movie theater, the right side of the whole crowd, energy has a polarity and a direction. So you receive information from your left, you send it out from your right. Okay, so holding yourself to the left, you wouldn't be getting all of that energy from the crowd or the group by sitting if you sat on the right. Okay, that's one thing. Okay. Okay. So, the, the, so the, staying the, on the periphery of a crowd, on the outside of a crowd, you <clears throat> won't be bombarded as much or staying on the left side of the crowd. Okay. Okay. That's really good to know. Staying on the left. So you're saying you receive information on the left and then you send it out on the right. Yes. That's how uh, the polarity of our energy, energy works. It has a polarity or a direction. Okay. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. Um, because we, yeah, we have a polarity. We are a magnetic, energetic being. They know that our heart has the um, the highest RPMs or puts out the greatest electrical charge. But we are a magnetic, electrical being, and and literally, they're finding out the electrical charge or the um, the rate, uh, I call it the RPMs, the resonant frequency for kidney stones. That's how they get rid of kidney stones. They know how it, how fast it vibrates. Yeah. Just like in England, they have um, determined the frequency or the RPMs of fibroids. And so women are no longer um, Mm. So having to go through hysterectomies in England, they're getting hit with sound waves that are the frequency of fibroids. It's outpatient and no more fibroids, no, no surgery. Whoa, so we that. have a frequency. We are an electrical body. And that's where all the practices of working with chi mm -hmm. uh, from the East come from. The hands-on healing and working with meridians is generally working is about working with our body as an electrical mm, frequency conduit <laughs> or map. Yeah. So so give us another thing that we might learn in your um, intensive uh, care self defense. Oh, psychic self defense. Yes. Um, simple things that you can do. Um, that some things that people do. Uh, Mm. automatically when you learn about body language okay so uh, just uh, putting your hands together and holding them in front of uh, in front of you so mm, I'm going to say clasping your hands and uh, holding them just right down in front of you where do you're doing you're going to your crotch or to your second chakra which would be the middle of your tummy yeah okay that's a place that you uh, that energy can leak out from, or and others can plug into. So you are this vibrating body of energy, uh, and 
others may, and you look very vibrant and healthy and active, and others may not be feeling up to par, uh, say they're not feeling really well, or not feeling as vibrant and you look like you've got it going on. And so by uh, the simplest would be like by osmosis, where they hook in from in those areas, in the tummy area, front and back, and just blocking it with your hands. Wow. Just putting your hands together like this and holding them right in, right below your belly button is going to stop your ener any energy going out. And you could sit there and nod your head and smile, but you're still protecting yourself. That's okay. great to know. Um, another great one would be, um, what is it? It begins with visualization, and Shakti Gwain wrote the groundbreaking book, uh, Creative Visualization, uh, back in the late 80s, and you had the dream team and all these high-end sports teams realize that with visualization, they did even better than getting out on the court and practicing, okay, which translates into money and wins and all of that. Okay. So, um, and our minds are very powerful. When you've had a stressful encounter, um, uh, let's say, or just coming home from work, when you put your hand on your car door, imagine that a great waterfall of light is flowing through you just like you stepped into a shower. Cleaning off all the dirt and grime of the day energetically so that the only person who gets in that car is you you're not bringing home your boss all your co-workers all the all of your accounts and your issues okay so literally you're taking an energy bath you do it when you put your hand on the car door or when you put your hand on your mm, front door um, whatever you, whatever little things to remind you, and then just let the whole waterfall pour down. I love to envision Multnomah Falls because it has such a huge drop. It's um, right outside of Portland, and it's the longest waterfall in Portland. But you can picture Niagara Falls, which is really big. <laughs> and I and I give it white light. Um, white is purifying and cleansing. And so this waterfall of light is purifying, cleansing, light of love, light of all that is, um, cleansing and renewing and letting go, letting go. Mm, if you come home, if you come home from work and you find that you're still whining and complaining, then you've still got everyone from work sitting in your living room. And that's just a little creepy when you put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So self-care is the same way we brush our teeth every day, take and take a shower, is to do an energy shower. That's an easy one. I tell people if you're having a hard time at work, so you're at work and you're getting a little overwhelmed, a little overloaded, go to the bathroom. That's a place for release, right? It's private. Close the door. Close the door. One of the most powerful ones um, an easy one is to take off your glasses and palming. Palming is taking one hand and covering up your eyes and breathing. Okay. Our eyes are wired into an ancient part of our brain. There's so much that we only, we only know a little bit about all the information that comes in through our eyes. When we shut down all stimulus, Immediately, uh, we go to a new point where uh, where deeper relaxation and release can take place. So I say, go to the bathroom, close the door, palm, and breathe. When you take, uh, and you will start shifting and mm, not only, and finding your center, getting more grounded, and getting greater clarity, okay? So getting greater clarity. If you'll notice, my fingers are going over my forehead, okay? So just touching there activates your intellect, okay? That's why we put our hands over our head to try and remember. But it also activates our third eye or moves us into wisdom. As we release and shut down all the other external stimuli of the mind and the day-to-day -day stuff and breathe, 
we go into our true wisdom and get a new perspective. Wow. That's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Matter of fact, I got to go take your course. When is your course? It's going to be not this weekend, uh, but next weekend. Uh, oh, I've got to have the date down. Uh, it's listed on my website, elivia.com. Yeah, and I want to spell that. It's E L I V I A dot com. And when you go to her site, you'll see all of her workshops and every place that she's going to be. But you'll also be able to buy her CDs, which I highly recommend. And also you can schedule to have a reading with her. And I am assuming now that you're such a professional with Skype that you'll be doing Skype readings one on one from people all over the world, right? I will be. This is the groundbreaker. <laughs> There you go. So you can have a Skype session with her or you can have a phone session. I highly recommend this lady, but more importantly, you've got to buy one of those CDs. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's all I can say. The music is phenomenal. So I was going to say for those of you with iPods, it's downloadable everywhere. Oh, that's even better because so, then you can yeah. take it to bed with you. You know, we are all out of time, but I can't thank you enough for coming on and, and just showering us with all of this terrific information. It is wonderful. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Jules. Thank you for hosting me. And and I want to have you back again because you've got just got this treasure load full of knowledge that you can share with us and and you're right this is the time of awakening and and you're bringing everyone to greater heights so thank you very much thank you okay and to all my wonderful listeners thank you so much and we'll see you back here next week bye bye Thanks so much for sharing your energy with us today. We will be back with another great show next week on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you would like to see a video of this broadcast, go to LOARadioNetwork.com forward slash jewels dot html or send an email to jewels at LOARadioNetwork.com. <laughs>